Check.
Good morning, and welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we are leading people to experience God's love, know Jesus Christ, and grow in his image. I'm Jessica Peterson, and I am delighted that you are worshiping with us this morning. We want to encourage you as you're worshiping with us from wherever you are to register your attendance either um, online or on Facebook. View our website for more information about how you can stay connected with Bethany during this time. Submit prayer requests online so that we can be in prayer for you and also continue supporting the ministries of our church with your financial giving either online or by mail. We know that many of you are longing to be back in this worship space and we continue to be in prayer and conversation and developing protocols in response to what you told us in the survey would help you to feel safe as you return. And we do not have an exact date for when that will happen, but you might see and hear that today in worship we have a few extra people in this space, and those are staff and worship volunteers that are helping us um, to test out our protocols. And we thank you for your patience and your prayers as we do our best to test out these protocols and to make this space safe for when we can return. I do have one opportunity for you to worship with your Bethany family. This evening at 7.30 p.m. in the parking lot, we have an outdoor worship service. And due to the rising number of cases, we're gonna ask that people worship in their cars for a drive-in worship service, but you can come here to campus and join us for that tonight at 7.30 p.m. And now let us begin with our worship. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, I invite you to stand as you're able and let us worship. In my wrestling, and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace.
We are never alone. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another wind when the walls are closing in. When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding, how I've been set free There is another The burden Where another died for me There is another In the fire All my dead left for death Beneath the water no longer a slave to my sin anymore should i fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning either way i won't bow to the things of this world and i know i will never be And still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire. Then I can feel the ground shake between us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between. Joy, come every battle, cause I know. 
Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy from every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy from every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be You may be seated. Let us pray. God of all people, and in all circumstances, we come to you this day grateful for the opportunity to worship you. It is a gift, truly a gift, from wherever we are, whatever the circumstances, to spend time in your presence worshiping you. Enable us to see the gifts of this day, this time, in the midst of whatever else may be clouding our minds. Grant us your grace and your peace. We need it as we read unsettling news, as we experience anxiety about the world, as we long for connection that is deeper than what a screen can provide. We may find ourselves asking, how long, O oh Lord? And if we are asking that question, God, we ask that you grant us patience and endurance. Sustain us and fill us with your grace as we move through our weariness. God, remind us of your call on our lives to love you, to love others. That is what you call us to as your disciples. That is why you created us and that is why we live. We pray that you will remind us of that each moment of each day and keep our minds fixed on you as we seek to do that in our current circumstances. God, our hearts and minds are filled with so much more today and we lift those things up to you. Hear the words of our hearts. Hear the groaning within us for those things for which we do not have words. Lord, we know that you hear our prayers, and we are grateful for that gift. Remind us of your love for us, and of your call on our lives to love others as we pray this familiar prayer that talks about the work that you have led us to do in your world as Jesus taught us through his example. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you are just now joining us for worship, welcome. We are glad that you are joining us today. Be sure to register your attendance and visit our website for updated information. As we prepare for our time of offering, today we celebrate that the Bethany congregation hears Jesus' call for us to feed the hungry and has remained in action to do that all throughout this pandemic. We're both a donation and a distribution site, and today we celebrate efforts to provide fresh and non-perishable food items to those struggling with food insecurity in our community. You can continue to donate items anytime by dropping them off in one of the barrels outside the Galilee building, where they will be picked up, sorted, and distributed by Bethany volunteers to three food missions in our area. Thank you for giving generously to support the mission of this church. You can contribute your offerings online or by mail. I searched the world But it couldn't find me And man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are 
are never enough Then you came along And put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, yes, I know it's true. Turn bones into armies. You turn. 
Good morning, and again, welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we are leading people to experience God's love, to know Jesus Christ, and to grow in his image. My name is Sherry Clifton, and I'm one of the pastors here at Bethany. We want to continue to remind you that our website is the best place for information about updates to our campus and to our worship services and to the life of the church, ways that you can get involved, ways that you can uh, submit your prayer requests and let us know how we can be in service to you. Uh, as you may have heard Jessica say, we have a few people in the room with us this morning. We are responding to your requests for certain things to be in place, for you to feel safe in returning to this space. We don't know when that will be, but we are in prayer and conversation about how best to do that for you and for all of us. And so we want you to know that, that there are some people here today that are volunteers testing our, our processes and uh, we're thankful for them, and we're especially thankful for you as you continue to join us in worship each week. Uh, back in the 80s, which was just a few years ago, there was a sitcom called Cheers, and the, the, sit, the Cheers uh, theme song is Timeless, and I thought it was appropriate for us today. I've asked Nick if he would play it for us. Make your way in the world today Takes everything you've got Taking a break from all your worries Sure would help a lot Wouldn't you like to get away? Making our way in the world today is taking everything we've got. This world of pandemic, this world of racial tensions and injustice, of political divide, of economic uncertainty, of Saharan dust, of all things, yes, uh, we'd love to get away and take a break from our worries and be with people who know us, uh, besides the people with whom we've been sheltering in place, uh, during this pandemic, uh, we want to see and experience that we're not alone. Dr. Dean Ornish says, the need for connection and community is primal, as fundamental as the need for air, water, and food. Being in community with one another is essential to our soul care and our self-care. We need connection with others, and when we don't have it, our lives are out of balance, and sometimes we recognize that, and sometimes we know that something's missing. We don't always know how to name it. I wonder how this resonates with you today. Do you have meaningful connections in your life, people who see you and know you, who help you maintain a sense of mental and spiritual and emotional health? Is your fundamental need for connection, is it being met? Or are you maybe, like many of us, feeling a little bit out of balance right now? Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to your word today, to your desire for us today to know you and to love you and to love others. And I pray that as we worship together as you speak to us, that we would allow your word to take hold of us and transform us and renew us. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In this series that we're in called self, uh, Soul Care is Self-Care, we're exploring spiritual rhythms that help us connect with God and with one another, spiritual rhythms that keep us grounded in our life of faith and in this world and in which we are living, grounded in the midst of all that is happening around us. Last week, we talked about the spiritual rhythms of worship and prayer, and this week, we're talking about connection and, and community. We are created in the image of God. We are wired 
for connection with God and with one another. And that connection is expressed in love. All of the Gospels speak about how we are to love God and to love one another. In Matthew's Gospel, teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love God and love others. Perhaps a, a visual image helps us remember uh, what this looks like. The cross serves as a, as a great visual reminder for us, this horizontal beam that reminds us of our connection with God, that we are to love God. This is our primary identity as beloved children of God, grounded in God's love for us, to grow deeper in our relationship with God, the, the value, the essential nature of our connection with God as we receive God's love and as we love God. One of my favorite quotes in this previous year has been from James Bryan Smith, who says, I am one in whom Christ dwells and delights. I live in the strong and unshakable kingdom of God. The kingdom is not in trouble, and neither am I. This sense of being connected with God, God's love for us and our love for God, but the cross isn't complete without the horizontal beam that we love God, but we also love one another. And the way that we love God and the way that we love one another are inseparably linked by the heart of God, by love. We cannot separate how we love God from how we love others, just as we can't separate how we love others from how we love God, linked, linked by love. Jesus models this rhythm of connection and community for us. Jesus is very grounded in who he is and his relationship with God the Father. As the beloved, Jesus spends time in prayer and solitude. Jesus spends time connecting with God, but Jesus never misses the opportunity also to connect with others. Jesus and his disciples, a, a small group of people that he called to, to be around him, to be with him, him. And the Gospel of Mark talks about Jesus calling the disciples to be with him, to do life with him. And even within the group of disciples, there's Jesus' special relationship with Peter and James and John. Jesus has friends that are like family to him, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And Jesus has the, the community of people that follow him, that seek his teaching, people who come to him for healing and for hope. Jesus models that rhythm of connection with God and with others that is essential to who we are. We are loved by God, and we are called by God, not only to love God in response, but also to love one another, a rhythm of connection and community. There are many scriptures throughout the Bible that speak to how we are to be in relationship with God and with one another, what that looks like and how we navigate those relationships. Two of those images are that we are one body. We have many parts, but we're one body. And another is that we are a family. We're in this together. We are united by the fact that we're all human beings. As Christians, we are further united by what Jesus does for us in making us brothers and sisters, heirs of the kingdom of God. None of us better than or more important than another. Two of those scriptures in Paul's writings out of Romans chapter 12, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. And in his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes, just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. 
For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. Scripture really couldn't be clearer that we are connected, that we belong to one another. We're intended to be in relationship with one another, and yet we really struggle with this. We long for connection. We long to be seen. We long to be known. It's in us. It's wired in us to be seen and to be known, to be understood, to be heard. We, we long for that, and we live in a culture that prides itself on independence, that prides itself on individual achievement and on position and power. We live in a culture that sets us up us and them, a culture that insidiously elevates competition over collaboration where there have to be winners and losers, where there are haves and have-nots, and where one side is clearly seen as better than the other. We long for connection, but we're suspicious of one another. We're suspicious about what someone might want from us or how someone might take advantage of us. We're suspicious that others might get what we want unless we go after what we want first. And so we curate connection in ways that might scratch the itch, but never really fulfill the longing for deep relationship, for deep connection. We find ways to fit in without ever finding a place to belong. But friends, fitting in is a poor substitute for belonging. Belonging is that place where everybody knows your name and they're always glad that you came. Belonging is the place where you can risk being seen and being known even while you are invited to see and know others. Belonging is a place where we can be real. And we all want to belong, regardless of age or gender or race, regardless of our political beliefs or theological positions, regardless of our education or job or where we live or what we have. Underneath all of that, we all want to belong. The truth is that relationships, relationships of belonging, can be difficult. They require effort. They require time and investment. They require a willingness to be authentic and to be vulnerable, and that's risky. Because when we're willing to be authentic and vulnerable, we might get hurt, we might be betrayed, we might be misunderstood, we might, in fact, be challenged in our own ways of thinking. We might even be rejected. It's risky to be authentic and vulnerable. And maybe that is our past experience, that, that when we've offered ourselves in that way, we've been hurt. But equally possible is that in relationships that are linked by God's love, we can find healing, and we can find understanding, and we can find hope and compassion and acceptance and, and growth, spiritual growth. And, and maybe even peace, maybe even some balance to our lives. St. Teresa said, if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. I suspect that perhaps we have forgotten that we belong to God and also to one another. In this rhythm of connection with God and with one another, when we grasp that we belong to God, when we are ones in whom Christ dwells and delights and that the kingdom of God is not in trouble, that that's where we live in the, in the kingdom of God that is unshakable, then we are freer and more able and perhaps more willing to be authentic and vulnerable to risk being known and to risk knowing one another, to make room 
for others to belong and not settle for fitting in when belonging really is our real desire. When we remember that we belong to God, then we're willing to risk remembering that we also belong to one another. To love God, to love others. That rhythm of connection and community that is essential to who we are. I, I can't help wonder what our world today, in, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the racial tensions, in the midst of the political and theological divisions, in the midst of all of the uncertainties around us, I can't help wonder what the world would look like if we actually remembered and believed that each of us belongs to God and that we all belong to each other. I wonder what choices we would make differently about what we post on social media or about how we buy groceries or about how we interact with one another or about how we honor one another in the midst of this ever-changing landscape in which we live. I wonder how the world would be different. I wonder where you feel connected to God today and to one another. Maybe today what you need to hear is the reminder that you belong to God. And if you can grasp that, then maybe what you need to remember is that you also have a place of belonging with others who, like you, are doing their very best to navigate this world in which we live, doing their very best with struggles that are just like yours, that we all have things that create heartache for us, things that we worry about, things that we are afraid of, things that, that feel so tenuous and uncertain in our relationships, in our jobs, in the world, in our community. You have a place to belong, first with God and with others who, just like you, have troubles that, that are all the same. They might not look specifically like yours, but we're in this together. Maybe you've been longing for connection and you simply either haven't had time or, or taken time or not known where to start. At, at Bethany, we have a number of ways where you can find community and connection with others. There are Sunday school classes, there are Bible studies, there are um, other groups that are meeting uh, mostly all on Zoom right now or some other media platform. If you're not connected, now's the perfect time to reestablish that rhythm of being connected to God and, and to one another. One of the ways that we've encouraged people over the last couple of years to be connected in this way, in this vulnerable, authentic way, is through grow groups. These small groups that meet once a week for an hour to an hour and a half and provide a safe space to talk about how life is with God and with one another, to share struggles and to uh, carry one another's burdens and also to celebrate life with one another. I'm going to tell you in a minute some of the responses that I, I talked to some of our grow group folks this week, had them respond to some questions and, and the way grow groups have made a difference in their life. I'll share those with you, but first I want to tell you about a new tool that we have. It's called Group Finder. This is on our website, um, how to find a, a community. If you go to our website, I'll give you that link in a minute. Uh, you can go find a group based on any number of things, uh, the type of class, where it meets, when it meets, day or time, uh, a group that might meet close to where you live. We want you to find a place to connect, and this is one of the ways that you can do that. The link is uh, right there on the screen. It's on the Facebook feed as well. You can look at that, that on our website. Another way for you to connect right now is with our uh, prayer ministry. We have a Wednesday evening prayer circle that is meeting during this series. There's also a Zoom prayer room at 10.30 this morning, every Sunday morning. I wonder if you'll risk stepping out. I wonder if you'll risk stepping into an opportunity to be connected with God and with one another. Last week, I asked some of our Grow Group participants a couple of questions. How has being in a Grow Group made a difference in your life? 
This has been the most impactful experience of my adult spiritual growth. My grow group friends are incredibly important to me. I value and trust their perspectives. I seek their support, and I feel I am also making a difference in their lives, connecting with God and connecting with one another. Someone said, listed all these things. There's a personal spiritual accountability. There's practice bearing personal witness, personal inspiration and reflection. There's a community of support and prayer. Helped me develop a stronger God-centered perspective. Being in a grow group constantly reminds me of God at work in my life and in the lives of others. Sharing celebrations and struggles through the lens of how is God working in the midst of this helps me keep a proper perspective. I approach the joys with more gratitude and the challenges with more hope and patience, and I get to experience the joy of God working through me as I encourage someone else when it's their turn to share. My grew group has been there for me during difficult times in my life. Just knowing that I was being thought of and prayed for helped me keep going. It gives me a time to be with others, sharing at a deep level the challenges and successes of us in having our faith journey. Connecting with God and with one another. I asked them to complete this sentence. Without my grow group, I would be less honest with myself, with others, and with God likely in a very bad place right now. More lonely during this period of COVID than I am. It helps with the lack of fellowship that I'm feeling because we cannot be together at church. Someone said, without my grow group, I would be spiritually treading water. And we all know that you can only tread water for so long. Then I asked them, the best, to finish this sentence, the best part of being in my grow group is... The opportunity to be completely myself, full acceptance and support when sharing my evolving relationship with Jesus. It provides a structure for me to explore and grow in my relationship with God through Christian friends that provide support and hold me accountable, share thought-provoking spiritual growth opportunities for me each and every week. Close friends that I've made with people that I probably would not know otherwise sharing at a deep level that helps me understand I'm not the only one who has struggles with their faith. We encourage one another. We share our joys and struggles in the context of how God is moving. And then I asked them, why would you encourage someone else to join a grow group? Someone wrote, my grow group has been instrumental in the maturing of my faith and relationship with Jesus. Another person said, I believe that grow groups are the single best way to truly start to examine and grow in your relationship with God in a supportive, friendly, and amazing way. If you aren't just looking to learn about God, but rather to know God and develop a personal relationship with him, this is truly is a truly transformational experience. It's not just about knowing about God. It's about knowing God. It's about loving God and loving others. It is about connection and community. And someone wrote, so that they can experience the people from our church who are actively trying to be better disciples of Christ, to encourage one another through the difficult periods of life, and learn to share their faith, both doubts and triumphs, with each other in an honest way. We're wired for connection. We're wired to be in community with one another, to know that we belong to God and that we belong to one another. There's really no better time than right now to take that step, for you to take that step and enter into a, a space where you cannot just fit in, but where you can belong. Loving God and loving others, that rhythm of connection and community is essential to our well-being, to our soul care, and to our self-care. You are one in whom Christ delights and dwells. You live in the unshakable kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not in trouble, despite how the world may feel right now. The kingdom of God is not in trouble, and neither are you. You belong you matter. You are not alone. We are making our way in the world today together. 
the body of Christ, the family of God, a rhythm that is fundamental to who we are. Let us pray. Loving God, we're grateful that you create us to be in relationship with you and with one another. We're grateful that you invite us into places of belonging, not just fitting in, but places where that deepest longing to to be known and to be understood can be experienced in, in the company of others. Lord, we pray that no matter how difficult it is for us, no matter how we've been hurt in the past, no matter how much time we don't think we have or how hard we think it will be, that you would help us be open to the ways that you're inviting us into belonging and the ways you're inviting us to help others know that they belong. It's clear to us, Lord, in the midst of this broken world, how desperately we need to remember that we are grounded in you, and when we are grounded in you, then we are free to love one another. We're free to make choices that reflect that we understand how intricately we belong to one another. Remind us, remind us, and give us courage to be ones who believe and to live in that space where we love you with all that we are, and where we willingly and joyfully love one another. Amen. I want to remind you that uh, there are ways for you to stay involved. In particular, I gave you a couple of ways, uh, even now, through prayer opportunities and through a group finder, other ways to be in mission and service. We encourage you to check out our website. We keep that information as up-to-date as possible on the ways the campus is is uh, available or not available, how we are worshiping, and how you can continue to be part of the body of Christ. I invite you where you are, if you're comfortable uh, doing so, to stand with us. We are going to affirm our faith together, reminding one another that we are not alone. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, In life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us sing together in our worship. I could just sit. I could just sit and wait for all your goodness. Hope to feel your presence. I could just stay. I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. I could hold on, I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I could be saved for be safe here in your arms and never leave home never let these walls down you have called me higher you have called me deeper and i'll go where you will lead me lord you have called me higher you have called me deeper and i'll go where you will lead me lord you'll lead me You'll lead me, Lord. I can hold on. I can hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I could be safe, home. I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home. Never let these walls down. You have called me high.
yours, oh, I will be yours for all my life. I will be yours, oh, I will be yours for all my life, so let your mercy the path before me you have called me higher you have called me deeper and I'll go where you will lead me Lord oh. you have called me higher you have called me deeper and I'll go where you will lead me Lord oh. you have called me higher you have called me deeper and I'll go where you will lead me I love even that image that we've been called higher and deeper, and God will lead us in our love for God and in our love for one another. I want to take a moment of personal privilege. You got to worship with Jessica Peterson today. Today's her last Sunday with us, and uh, she's one of those who has uh, challenged me to grow higher and to grow deeper with God and to be in relationship as community and connection. And so on behalf of all of you who are, are with us on Facebook and all who are here in this room, Jessica, thank you for all of these years of your faithful service. We will miss her presence with us, and we, uh, I ask that you would, even now, that you would offer a prayer of blessing for her as she heads on into the next part of where God is leading her. Uh, today, for our benediction, I want to read another passage of Scripture for you out of Colossians 3 that reminds us who we are and how we are to be in relationship with one another. I will say that over the years, groups like a grow group have been instrumental in my well-being, my physical and spiritual and mental well-being, and I really encourage you, to, if you do nothing else today, find a way to connect with people who will let you belong, people that you can be a place of belonging for. It makes all the difference in the world for you and for the world around you. So as we head out from this time of worship, I invite you to hear these words from Paul. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We're grateful for you today. We're grateful to God for the connection and community that we share with one another. So go today in the love of God, knowing that that's where you dwell. Go in the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. Go in the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that is never bound by walls or by space, but is with us wherever we are. Amen. Shalom to you now. Shalom, my friends. May God's full mercy 
bless you, my friends, in all your living, and through your loving, Christ be your shalom, Christ be your shalom, Christ be your shalom, Christ be your shalom. Christ be your shalom, shalom, shalom. Christ be your shalom.